Hello, welcome to another video. This time, something slightly different, but not really. It's a USB power adapter disguised in a power strip and a round can to make it go in a desk. There's not much to unboxing on this one, so I'm just gonna get right into checking it out for some of its performance. This is a fairly basic product, but with two USB ports, I'm curious how it negotiates or if both ports are active. The product listing was extremely vague on specifications, and I will also do a quick teardown to investigate if this thing was actually made okay or if there are some surprises inside. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I wanna get? As always, ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared. If you want more information, see the links in the description. Thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. Today, I have the XBA 2-inch desktop power grommet, recessed power strip with PD 20 watt USB-C, AC outlet, and 18 watt USB-A charging port. As far as I can tell, it has no model name or number and has numerous copies and clones out there that all look like this product. There's a good chance they are all the same, but just get branded differently. In any case, this power outlet USB port thing is a little different. I like the simplicity of it and the form factor. I don't like that they didn't label any of the ports or any part of it or state any of the statistics or anything on it on the casing. A small amount of effort here would help. Well, don't worry. I'll label it with a Sharpie and make it extra terrible. And looking around at the case of this, again, no labels at all. But the plug itself does has a UL logo on it and there's a UL marking number so I can look that up. When looking it up, we can see that the cord and the plug itself are actually safety listed but not the product. The USB ports, the socket, and the rest of this thing is not safety listed. So as a whole product, this doesn't have the markings, but the plug itself does. It's somewhat misleading, but it is common for the plug themselves to have a marking even if the product doesn't. In this case, with absolutely no marking on the product itself, it can also assume no energy efficiency standards. We don't know what voltage it supports. We don't know how much current it needs. Really, it wouldn't pass a safety listing or any other compliance standards. This thing actually shouldn't be for sale. But is it safe? We'll find out more on that later on. This adapter has one USB-C port and one USB-A port. With the lack of labels, I'll just get right into the testing to figure out what each port can do and how they interact with each other. I'm not sure if it's both ports active all the time or if two ports are cumulative, but first, how much idle power consumption is this thing going to need? And it is pretty good. The idle power consumption on this is fairly low. It isn't class leading, but for the power level, it is very acceptable. For a consumer product, you wouldn't notice this being plugged in in your electric bill. On the AC power side, it does lack a lot of filtering, therefore it is noisy, but at, at the extremely low current levels of this, it is easily filtered by other electrical components. There is plenty of room in the case of this device, so they didn't have an excuse to not make this a little better. The device does not have a removable power cord, and being a power strip, this is expected. But I prefer an IEC connector or something here so a proper length cord could be used. The product is all about room for improvement and there seems to be a lot of room. In terms of modes of operation, the USB-C port has a decent amount of options. 5, 9, and 12 volt fixed modes and 6 and 11 volt PPS modes. Being a 20 watt maximum port, this means it can't really deliver all that much current in these modes, but at least it has all the options, so you should be broadly compatible with devices. The claim of the 18 watt USB-A port is not true. It is a 3 amp port. The USB-A port also does not recover after an overload condition, so once it's off, you have to unplug it and replug it back in. The USB-C port is smarter in that it can recover after a fault. Both ports are short circuit tolerant. When both ports are in use, the ports both become 5 volt only. The DC output voltage, what actually does the charging work, looked fairly stable and low noise. The ripple did steadily climb throughout the testing. So the output filtering is okay for now, but over time this could present a little less than ideal power rail. Far from the worst I've seen though. Some of the advanced power metrics show that this power supply is basic and it doesn't have any advanced power supply techniques like power factor correction. And at the 20 watt power level, I wouldn't expect it to do anything like that. This is fine if you only have one of these, but if you were deploying in a computer lab with 100 desks, this would be a poor choice. And I'm not sure what's out there would be any better than this also. Leave it in the comments if you use something like this or one of the power strips with USB. It's a rabbit hole. They put them in everything and mostly I don't think they're very good. Okay, but is it safe? Well, when connecting it to the isolation tester, it actually looks pretty good. The isolation seems very reasonable for a smaller power adapter between the mains and the USB sockets. Okay, this shouldn't leave you with a tingling feeling while using the USB ports. The issue here is that I tore it down and that's where I really started to find an issue with this. 
Starting with the positive, the adapter module itself actually looks fairly reasonable. The transformer has wrapped secondary wires and a little extension shelf. I didn't open it, so it might be awful inside, but the other components lead to a better quality appearance. Like, it has a real fuse on the input, the suppression capacitor, the blue cap, is properly rated and sized, and the isolation gap is appropriate and the optocoupler appears to be listed and rated for the application. So from the initial look, it seems fine, better than some. If I look at the component choice, I do see the usual electrolytic capacitors that will fail if things get hot. Hopefully this doesn't get that hot since it's a lower power device and seems to have adequate overcurrent protections in place. It is then when I find out what is wrong with this adapter. The assembly is the issue here. I actually bought two of these for the price of two and I tore down both of them. One of them was fine, and one of them was not. This is a skipped assembly step or a design choice that makes it very easy to assemble these incorrectly. It is a bit too easy to do since 50% of what I got was bad. During the assembly process, the adapter has two wires connecting the main power input to the USB module. This is normal and okay but I have shown before where these wires get pinched in assembly. These wires were then pulled around the back of the circuit board before pushing it into the housing. This makes sure that the wires don't get pinched and creates a less safe situation. On the second one, this step was skipped and the wires were just jammed in. In this case, they weren't touching, but the wire shell was clearly sliced open by the bare PCB, very much on the output side of the circuit board. This is ruining that isolation between the primary and secondary sides. This is purely an assembly step, but it makes this device not great, and it really is the only thing I found to be bad, but it's kind of a big one. This adapter's average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE 6 efficiency, that means 25% to 100% load efficiency, this power adapter does okay. I looked at one Aki power station thing and that was truly a bad product. This one isn't like that performance wise. The standalone adapter from bigger makers like Anchor, Ugreen, Apple, Belkin, and Google are all better efficiency wise, but they're also one trick ponies. The idle power consumption, as I talked about, is also good. Again, it's not the best compared with top tiers, but it beats the pants off that Aki power station thing. That was the best example of how not to do USB on your power station. With the efficiency and idle power, this adapter does meet the DOE 6 requirements, even if it doesn't have the claim on the box. Again, the USB module itself seems pretty good. It's other things like assembly that make it less desirable. Let's talk about value. This represents fairly low value. It's expensive to get one AC output and a couple of mid-grade USB ports. You would be better off with dedicated devices that have proper marks and some confidence that they are assembled correctly. The Ugreen here shines in that 30 watt Nexo charger for value and the performance is also near the top for this power level. So the trouble I have with this thing is that it's trying to do two things and the actual execution of that process is where the failure lies. The assembly is incorrect and this leads to a potential safety hazard. Some of these may pass safety tests but not all of them will with the assembly issues. Is this solvable? Absolutely. Will it happen? Probably not. The standards don't prevent risk, they're all about risk mitigation. Is it good enough? And in this case, no, it isn't good enough. It makes me worry about how many of these types of products are out there that really shouldn't be. In this case, I would rather just have two AC outputs and a small power strip that is basic and functional in the desktop and then use a normal USB power adapter when needed, but it seems like USB ports have been shoehorned into everything on the market. In many cases, the USB ports are done very poorly. The USB module itself is fine, and if constructed with a little bit of care or some better design of the plastic molding, this product could be fine, but it isn't. It's e-waste. It isn't even that cheap. Someone tried and then someone else didn't. One bad choice gets this product the skip from me. Unfortunately, is the lesson here that these are all bad or is there something good out there? Anything I've looked at with power outlets and USB combined has been worse. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.